All right. <clears throat> I believe we are live. Awesome. So um, thank you for joining me today. Um, hello, everyone who's watching. My name is Allison Bowman. I'm the Arts Council of Johnson County's Administrative Assistant. Um, and this is one of our Wednesday Creative Conversations. And I am here with Mike Ott. And he is a local actor in Johnson County, right? That's or right. Or even the Metro. Yeah, yeah, we live we live in Johnson County. Most of the work I do is is um, in Kansas City, though. Awesome, great. Um, and the reason we have him on here today, not only is he a great actor, um, and he deserves to be recognized. Good save. <laughs> no, that was a great save. Excellent. Um, <laughs> he's also our MC for our Shooting Stars program, which will be this Sunday, April eighteenth at four p.m. online. It's free. It's virtual, and. Um, we hope everyone signs up and comes and sees the amazing talent of um, 92 Johnson County High Schoolers. Mm -hmm. And Mike is also a Shooting Star alumni, which is kind of it's perfect. True. It's true. So before we jump into that, um, do you want to tell us a little bit about yourself, um, kind of how you got started, what you're doing now, that kind of sure. thing? Yeah, sure. Happy to. Um, so I guess, I mean, I got started um, I don't know, my first role was in kindergarten. Uh, I played the Grinch uh, in <laughs> The Grinch Who Stole Christmas. Um, and funny enough, the, the next week we also did another Christmas pageant and I played Santa Claus. And it's the only time I've ever locked my knees and passed out on stage. <gasps> so that happened. And then for some reason I went, oh yeah, I wanna do that as a career. Yeah. And then here we are <laughs> years later. Um, <laughs> so that's where it started. And luckily it's gone uphill from there for the most part. Yep. Um, so uh, I went to high school at Shawnee Mission North. Um, when I was there, uh, Maureen Davis and Margaret McClatchy and Jason Harris, um, they were the heads of the program. Um, and now they have since, I know, scattered uh, to other places. Um, and my senior year, I was nominated uh, for the Shooting Stars, uh, which I think by that point, it had only been around for three years did it started 97 does that sound I think, yeah I think that right so about three years so it was still relatively new um so I didn't really I didn't know much about it uh at the time uh I actually ended up getting uh nominated in vocal performance instead of theater performance which was weird for me because at the time I didn't think of myself as a singer uh I thought I'm an actor and I can you know not sound like a dying goose while I sing. Um, and so I got nominated for it. Uh, I did not win. So thank you for that. Uh, I, I'm not holding My on to God, it. My God, everybody. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not, I'm not holding on to it at all. Uh, no, so I did not win. But actually, um, looking back on it now, I'm sort of glad that I didn't win because it was one of the first times I had had to deal with the word no mm -hmm. uh, in, you know, in the performing arts arena. Um, and it was, uh, it was rough at the time. I, I didn't, I didn't understand why I didn't win. And I think, you know, a lot of us have that experience. Um, but I, I know it, it prepared me for hearing that word a lot uh, as a professional. Because, oh, yeah. um, boy, we all, we all hear it a lot. We hear it more than, more than yes. So, um, so looking back on it, I think, I, I think it was good um, that I, you know, didn't win that thing. Uh, and then let's see what happened next. I went to KU for my first couple of years uh, of college, got all the um, you know gen ed stuff out of the way, um, had the stereotypical college experience. Uh, and then I transferred to UMKC, uh, which is where I uh, majored in theater and got my degree and um, made a lot of uh, really great connections, um, both personally and professionally there. Um, and here I am. 16 years later, uh, doing it, doing it for a living, which is pretty awesome. That's awesome. Um, I, I love that you said that you, you know, got used to hearing the word no, because that is so true. Even, I mean, all types of artists, I'm a visual artist. I get that word a lot. Yeah. You kind of just, you know, you grow a thick skin, but um, for those that are watching and don't know about the Shooting Stars program, I'm just going to run through it really quick. Um, yeah. so the Arts Council of Johnson County hosts an event every year called the Shooting Stars um, Recognition and Awards Program. And what we do is we have we give the chance to high school uh, teachers, art teachers, music teachers, um, English teachers to nominate one student 
um, for this program. And the students then, they're, they're seniors in high school and they compete within nine categories um, in the arts. So like visual performance and literary arts. Um, they compete for first and second place and they get scholarships. Um, first, and place, first and second place get scholarships for their um, you know, talents, their awards um, or their achievements based on like their resume. Um, so it, a lot of work goes into it and the students are just amazing and dedicated and I'm always blown away. This is my kind of second year. Um, I sort of helped out with the last, the one in 2020, but this is my like first full year of, of doing the full program. And I am just blown away by how amazing the students are. Um, but anyway, we have this big gala at the end of the, the school year. Um, we have a fabulous MC every year. <laughs> um, and then we um, give away scholarships and teachers, nominating teachers who, if their student wins first place, they get a teacher award. So not only are we recognizing students, we're recognizing their teachers as well. Yes. Um, so that's very, very brief run through of the Shooting Stars program. Um, but even though we only give away, I think it's 18 scholarships, nine first and nine second place scholarships, every single one of those students deserves, deserves to be recognized. Um, I mean, it's an honor. I would, I'm jealous that I didn't have the opportunity in high school. I grew up in Manhattan, Kansas. And even though we had a big high school, probably about the same as, you know, one of the Shawnee Mission high schools, we didn't have anything like that. And I think it's great that Johnson County does have this kind of program. Um, tooting my own horn over here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, that being said, we have 92 finalists this year and all of them are just incredible. It's awesome. So, Back to you, Mike. Oh, yay. <laughs> um, so what are you doing now? What, I mean, can you tell us a little bit, you know, anything you're working yeah. on? Yeah, once I figure it out, I will let, let you know. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, it, it, not what I thought I was going to be doing a year ago. Um, mm -hmm. I have had um, uh, five productions that were canceled um because of obviously the pandemic yeah. um and so me uh just like uh, everyone else you know i'm i'm uh, pivoting trying to figure out um one how how to make a living you know uh, i have a house i have a family i have bills to pay just like we all do um so how how can you know we keep going day to day um while at the same time how can i how, how can I still get fed artistically uh, in some way? Obviously, it's not going to be the same. Um, you know, being in front of being in front of a live audience for me is the ultimate. There's there's nothing better than that. It's it's it is unlike any any feeling I've ever had. Um, and obviously, that's not practical right now. Um, I have been I've been lucky enough to um, be able to do you know a few commercials, um, a little bit of um, a voiceover. Um, I have um, been involved with uh, KCAT, uh, Kansas, City's Act, uh, Kansas City Actors Theater, excuse me, um, has done a great job of, of pivoting kind of their business model. Um, and they've been producing these 30-minute uh, weekly radio dramas and comedies um, on 90.1, um, cool. which has been awesome. Um, and I, I was lucky enough to be uh, in the cast of Kansas City 1924, which uh, was an original script. Um, we had a whole season. We had, um, if I remember right, I think 13 episodes. Um, and uh, it kind of takes place uh, at the rise or just uh, as uh, Pendergast is starting to come into power um, here um, in the city, which was a big turning point obviously for us here in the city and as for Kansas City on a, you know, on, on a more national scale. Mm -hmm. um, so that was, that was a ton of fun, a great cast of, of all local actors. Um, I got to be a, you know, an Irish cop, which is always fun. Wow. Um, got to rough up some people. Well, I got to sound like I was roughing yeah. up some people. Um, so that was great. Yeah, I, um, I know that, I know that I am extremely lucky uh, that I was able to to find something, um, you know, to keep us keep us moving here, and hopefully before too long we'll 
we'll be back in person and whatever, you know, whatever way that looks. Yeah. Yeah. I hope so. I'm really excited for theaters and concert halls to open back up. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, so pre-pandemic, I don't know, you probably get asked this a lot, but do you have a favorite role that you've ever played? Man. Mm -hmm. That's sort of, that's, it's like asking which of your children is yeah. your favorite. <laughs> and if I had more than one, let's, I would still have a favorite child. Yeah. We all do. And if you say you don't, you lie. Uh, <laughs> my favorite child is Alba because she's the only one I have. And okay. I'm saying that in case she's watching this so she doesn't yell at me when she comes home. Um, <laughs> man, a favorite role. I don't know. Um, I've been, uh, I have been very blessed to do a lot of great, um, a lot of, a lot of great roles. Um, I guess I would say, I think my favorite um, classic um, role. So, you know, from a show that everybody's heard of, uh, I did the producers a few years ago at uh, MTH, a musical theater heritage uh, there at Crown Center. And I got to be Roger Debris, uh, the flamboyantly gay Broadway director who is tasked with bringing springtime for Hitler to life. Uh, and I think I had more fun doing that than just about anything I've ever done. So that, that was pretty great. Um, in terms of um, a role that maybe, if I said the name out loud, a lot of people would have no idea who it is. Um, I, I've been lucky enough to get to do quite a few um, world premieres of shows, which means you get to build the character from the ground up. Um, you know, it's a ton of fun playing a well-known character, um, you know, like from the producers or Ragtime or, you know, um, any other, you know, number of, of musicals that everybody's heard of. Um, but there's something special about being able to build the character from the basement up. You, you know, there, you don't get to fall back on, well, I saw this guy do it once and maybe I'll just sort of do it sort of like him and then make it my right. own. Uh, it's, it's all you, you're on the hook. It's, you're creating a brand new person. Um, and I have, um, so I've done this show a few times. It's called The Ballad of Lefty and Crab. Uh, it originally premiered at uh, Casey Fringe back in, I think 2014, okay. uh, written by some local guys um, known as uh, Friend Dog Studios. They do a lot of viral videos. So like if you've seen uh, Drunk Trump uh, or um, GOP Jesus, I think are two of their bigger. Uh, <laughs> viral videos. So please go look them up. Um, uh, but it's, uh, Ben Oksher, Brian Huther, and Seth Mackey. Um, they were, uh, from here. They now live in Chicago and Denver. Um, but they wrote this brand new musical, uh, about, uh, the, um, kind of the demise of vaudeville based around two vaudeville, um, actors who are, um, trying to struggle, uh, through figuring out what to do now that vaudeville is slowly dying and Hollywood and, you know, films are, are, rising. Uh, and I got to play their uh, fast talking agent, E.G. Swellington. Uh, and uh, I, it was it was basically it was just a blur of words. It was a blur, <laughs> a cacophony, a blur of words. Um, and it was a ton of fun. And um, I've gotten to do three different productions of that show, one up in Chicago, which was uh, just next level awesomeness. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I'd say, I'd say, I'd say those. That's how's awesome. that for a how's that for a nine minute answer on a 30 no, second that's question great. you know i mean i'm curious what is that process like building a character up from the ground i mean what goes into that um i i know everybody has their own process um for me it starts it i try not to start it until the first table read um i try to you know uh, not do any work on my own Mm -hmm. um, because let's say I've put in, you know, three weeks of work to create this character. And then I come in, we do the table read and see what everybody else is doing. And I go, well, this guy doesn't, he doesn't live in this world. He doesn't fit at all. Yeah. Um, so I like to wait until the first table read, um, try to, you know, feel things out, see what other people are doing, um, uh, you know, bounce off of them. It, it, it's theater is such a collaborative effort. Um, uh, at least it is when it's, it is when it's at its purest, in, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, so even though I'm the one creating this character, I'm still creating it in a world where he he has to be believable that he lives in this world, which are inhabited by all these other characters that that are also being created. Um, 
so I start there. Uh, and then it, with something like Lefty and Crab, it's a comedy, um, a musical comedy, very cartoonish. So um, I want to make big choices. Uh, I don't want to be afraid uh, that one of those choices is going to suck because uh, a lot of them, you're going to throw a lot at the wall and a lot mm -hmm. is going to slide right back onto the floor. Yeah. Uh, and that's okay. But you make big choices and you're more likely to find those little nuggets where you're like, oh yeah, that's, yeah, let's, let's keep that. Um, and just, just play. It's, I mean, that's, it's the funnest job in the world. So don't stress out about it. Yeah. Uh, so I, you know, I just, I play. Uh, and luckily in, in Lefty and Crab, the writers, I mean, one are brilliant. So they do a lot of the work for you, but two, they, they do something where, um, you will have a few lines throughout the show where um, we call them bracketed lines because it'll be, um, you know, uh, for example, a line in one of the early versions was uh, that guy looks like a, and then it's a bracketed line and you are allowed every night to improv what that guy looks like. Nice. Um, and so uh, it's a way to keep, keep the characters fresh, keep them interesting um, and, those bracketed lines, I think, helped me more than anything in in creating who uh, who who Swellington was. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, my first that bracket was my first bracketed line, and I believe that night I said he looked like a yardstick dipped in hair. And I don't know what that means, but it sounds hilarious. I so that. I I went with that and went, okay, all right, yeah, Perfect. I can do this. This is this is fun. That's awesome. That sounds so fun. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, very cool. Um, well, I have more shooting stars questions, but I kind of want to talk more about theater. <laughs> I'll answer whatever you got. <laughs> um, so let's see. You said you, um, you, you've done a show in Chicago. Have you, mm -hmm. have you, I mean, what are other, some other places that you've done shows? Uh, for now, it's been it's been here and it's been Chicago. Um, I I'm doing this a little backwards. Mm -hmm. uh, when I got out of college, uh, for lack of a better word, I was lazy. Uh, I really didn't do much to start my career. Um, I was under the impression, falsely, uh, that you know it'll just happen. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's what you hear all the time from people saying, yeah. well, you know, you know, it's really easy cracking into show business because mm -hmm. it just sort of happens. Yeah. you know, you, you hear that all the time. I was, I was very naive uh, and very cocky. Um, and surprisingly enough, that didn't work. Mm -hmm. um, and so then I sort of fell out of it um, because it had to turn, it turned into crud, I, I got to make money. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I did a lot of odd jobs for quite a few years. Um, and so I've, I've really only been, a, you know, a professional, professional actor for, um, I'd say, nine or 10 years, okay. give or take. Um, and I've been with my um, now fiance uh, for almost seven years, um, seven years next week, um, wow. I guess a week and a half. Uh, and so I'm sort of doing the family thing first because I, I mean, I have a daughter in fourth grade. I can't just pick up and go to LA. Right. Um, going to Chicago for the whole summer was, was a struggle enough. Um, as is. So for now, um, you know, I, I'm sort of I don't know, blazing my own trail here trying to figure out how to how to do this with a young family uh, and try to get my career off the ground more more than more than it already is. Um, yeah. So it's, you know, I'm doing as much as I can here. Um, if I can pick up a job in Chicago, great, I'll do it. Or, you know, go to I went to New York for an audition um, actually right before the pandemic hit and then that show ended up getting canceled yeah. um, so things like that um, you know it's uh, yeah it's you know you hear people ask like well, what's it like being you know being an actor or being in the theater world during a pandemic and one thing I've heard over and over is it's like learning to fly the plane while you're also building the plane yeah. and you're 30,000 feet in the air. Yeah. Um, so I, it kind of felt like I was already doing that. Uh, and now, you know, the pandemic, I think just set the back of the plane on fire. Uh, so uh, it's, you know, uh, 
that you know that being said uh, it's it's all it, I, I love doing it more than anything else uh, i know that it's it's not just a job for me it it, it really is who i am you ask my ask um, becca my fiance it's i i don't i don't stop acting uh there's a lot of there's a lot of voices at home there's a lot of weird characters that pop up while i'm cooking dinner it's it's uh yeah it, it's uh, i didn't choose the job the job chose me yeah that's awesome um well i i'm ready for the pandemic pandemic to i mean i say be over but i mean is there really going to be a point where it's just like yeah. okay it's over you know yeah i don't i don't but, think it probably is but i hear yeah, yeah i just i just hope we can figure out um i don't know how to how to live with bringing how, the arts back and how how not to just survive but maybe how to thrive a little bit yeah that, how to yeah nice not just exist but you know kind of make our way in the world at the same time. Yeah, we like um, it's worth it for a little bit. How, yeah. like, are you, are you still doing um, visual arts? Um, I know you're doing this job full time. Um, yeah. So are you still, are you still able to, to do your, your visual arts? I am. Um, I, I tell everybody that I, I mean, not everybody, but anybody who asks, I, I am extremely fortunate that, you know, I didn't get let go from my job and um, I, we, we actually bought a house in the pandemic, which I, a lot of people <laughs> I would not recommend, uh -huh. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's, yeah. So a lot of good things have come out of this pandemic for me um, and doing my art is one of those. I was able to kind of focus more on on what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go with it. Um, I am a visual artist, I'm a painter. Um, I paint, uh, it's abstract kind of botanical artwork. Um, cool. So that did image- you those, I, Did you paint the mugs behind you? Please tell me you painted the mugs. No, I collect mugs, I have a lot, but I, I collect mugs <laughs> from a lot I of- really, I really just wanted to see the mugs because I- I know, <laughs> I want to paint mugs though. I just, um, that's on the list of things to do. and. Go. My thing with the pandemic is I, I've been able to experiment a lot more. And so I've been able to kind of, you know, I, I went to K-State first for fine arts. And even though it's not really an art school, it was an arts program. And they taught you like, here's how to be an artist. Here's what you need to do. You gotta go to grad school. You gotta do this, 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 this. And I was just kind of like, nah. <laughs> and so, yeah, so I'm, I'm experimenting. I'm kind of, figuring out what I'm doing, um, not really Good letting anybody tell me what to do, which is fun. You. I would agree with that. I don't think there is a way to be an artist. I think yeah. there are ways to be an artist, but uh, I don't think there, yeah, you want to be an artist? Great. Follow these 12 steps and boom, then you're an artist. Yeah. Yeah. That's not quite how it works. <laughs> that's awesome. Good for you. Yeah. So it's been good. Um, and again, I'm excited for I think a lot of galleries have opened up. Um, some yeah. are still by by appointment, but um, yeah, I'm I'm ready for people to get out and look at art. <laughs> yeah, it's moving in the right direction at least. Yeah. Um, so I am curious. I know you were your shooting stars alumni, and you didn't win, which is totally okay. <laughs> and we're gonna bring it up <laughs> we're as bring it up often again. as we can. Mike didn't win. No. <laughs> That's actually, we're making t-shirts for the gallery. Yeah. <laughs> but you did win because you were nominated and that's- Yeah, guess awesome. what? The winner's not emceeing the gala this year. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, is there anything that you took away from the Shooting Stars program other than what you said before, you know, being able to, to deal with being told no? I mean, yeah. is there anything you learned from that experience? Um, I think, um, I think I, I remember, um, that the gala back then was, it was still, it was at Juco, um, mm -hmm. but it was in the, um, in the, the theater there. Yeah. Um, and I remember showing up cause I, I mean, I had no idea that, you know, were there, there going to be 12 people at this thing? Are there, how many people are, are doing this? And to see just the sheer numbers of it, it felt I felt like part of a bigger community mm -hmm. um, because even though, you know, Shine Mission North had, um, and I'm pretty sure still has uh, a, a fantastic theater program um, with 
a lot of, of kids involved in it. It's still, at least for me, I, I still felt pretty isolated, um, you know, uh, from, um, you know, from other kids, um, mm -hmm. my, my age, even though, you know, I, I did, I did sports when I was younger and lots of different things, but it, it, I didn't feel like this was something that, you know, thousands of people in the metro area did. And back then, I, I didn't think of Kansas City as an arts town. Right. Um, and I think that was the first time where I went, oh, okay. All right. So there's, there's some stuff going on here. Okay. All right. Um, and it's probably one of the big reasons why I ended up deciding to go to UMKC um, for my degree. Um, because, you know, I wanted to I wanted to be involved. I, I wanted to immerse myself in the KC art scene. Um, and so I, I think without that aha moment, um, you know, there's there's no telling where I would be right now. My, um, my fiance and I talk about it all the time that even though there's a part of me who that's disappointed that I, I didn't get involved in being, a you know, or being more serious about my, my career earlier, yeah. um, that had I done that, I probably wouldn't have been here. So we probably wouldn't be getting married this summer. Um, so it was probably, you know, it was, it, it was meant to happen the way it's happening. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but yeah, I think, I think that sort of, yeah, started, started the snowball effect on that. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I'm a firm believer that everything happens for a reason. So it's pretty, I mean, I wouldn't say like, yeah, go out and not do anything for. Right, it'll just work know. out. It'll yeah, it is. Yes, please. Maybe That's not, not what I'm saying, children. <laughs> please yeah. don't do that. But if you, I mean, like me, I'm I I work um, not quite full time, but almost full time, and um, I paint on the side on the side that sounds like a side hustle that's weird um <laughs> I paint, it out of the back of your van Jeez. yeah exactly that's that's weird um I also paint and um I totally forgot what my point to that story was so I now I'm <laughs> just picturing you selling photos out of the back of your van so. just, yeah uh, spray painting stuff um all right well <laughs> <laughs> on that note um I'm just gonna stop talking about me. Um, so my other question for you is, um, I feel like my questions are now redundant. You're so good at just talking about <laughs> the arts. You no, know, that's just the nice way of saying, Mike, you drone on a lot. <laughs> no, um, my question is, do you believe the arts are important in education? Um, but not really, party. no, no, but, not really. Okay. <laughs> no. Next question. No. All right. Yes, <laughs> yes. I think it is one of the most important things uh, that uh, is that kids are exposed to the arts uh, as early and as often as possible. Mm -hmm. I think um, when you are exposed to the arts, whether as an audience member or somebody at an art gallery, or if you are participating in the arts, uh, band, photography, mm -hmm. choir, you name it, I think it activates a part of your brain that otherwise just sit there collecting dust. Yeah. I think it allows you to look at the world differently. Uh, I think it allows you to look at people differently. Um, I think it allows you to connect with people better, um, which God knows we need that right now. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I really, I, I think it is so vitally important um, that we not only keep arts in our school, but that programs like Shooting Stars and any other arts program across the country. If it gets kids involved in the arts in some way, even if they're not going to go on to be, you know, a professional actor or a painter or whatever, um, it, I think it, it activates that part of the brain. And I don't think that part of the brain ever goes back to sleep again. Yeah. So I think it allows you to look at, you know, if you become an accountant, awesome. I think that it allows you to look at things different, even if you're an accountant or uh, not to pick on accountants, you're all lovely people. <laughs> um, but whatever you go into, I, I think that it, I think it, it prepares you um, better for it. And I, I just, I think it, I, I think it's wonderful. I, I just, I can't, I cannot 
sing the arts praises enough. I, I really, I, I really can't. Yeah, I totally not to mention agree. during the last year, what have people been doing more than anything else? Exactly. You've been watching Bridgerton over exactly. and over and over and yeah. Tiger King. I'm really just listing off the things I've watched. But That's can you imagine if this pandemic had happened 15 or 20 years ago before we had streaming services? Mm. I you thought thought the last year was rough now. <laughs> Holy cow. Uh, I mean, honestly, I, it kept us, it gave us something to do, especially mm -hmm. on those early days where we were afraid to go to the grocery store. Yeah. Um, I mean, the arts kept us you know, as relatively sane as we are now. Um, but I, I can't imagine this last year if it wouldn't have been for the arts. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm, I'm not shocked. I wasn't super shocked, but I was pleasantly surprised, I guess. Um, the amount of people in our community that came together um, because of the pandemic and, you know, boosted the arts and shared the arts. Um, you know, there were, at the beginning of the pandemic, there was, you know, people would go outside and draw things on their sidewalk and chalk and people would paint in their windows and make signs of encouragement. So people, you know, that were walking by their house, they would see these and be uplifted. And yeah. I just, there are so many organizations just in Johnson County that have been doing like take home art kits or, um, creating videos on how to do certain things. And I just think that's really amazing that um, that's even a possible right now. Right. Yeah, we still find uh, little painted rocks. We have a, a creek yes. path that we go walk on. Um, and we still, uh, every time we see a new rock, uh, it, you know, it just gives you just a little, just a little moment of, it feels like fresh air. Like, oh, exactly. that's nice. Yeah. You know, and we keep walking. Um, it's yeah, it's something as simple as that. It's it's pretty magical. Yeah, it's very awesome. Um, and I hope that continues even after the pandemic as well. I hope. I I really really hope. If I hope we've learned, not that not that us as humans ever learn anything, but I, I hope I hope that that's one of the the uh, lessons that we take from all this. How vitally important the arts are. Yeah, yeah. I love that. Um. Well, that's all my questions. Cool. Uh, I think that was perfect. Perfect now, answer. <laughs> now we've come to the interpretive dance portion. Yep. All right. Evening. Take away, Mike. <laughs> oh, oh, that was no. Nobody. Oh. Needs that. oh, look at that. We have zero viewers now. Look at no, that. we have four. <laughs> um, is Rebecca Allen your fiance? Rebecca Allen is my fiance. What? <laughs> how watching. Do, well, oh, she is. Uh oh. What is she? Whatever. Can we block her comments? No. Is it possible. <laughs> Because she has a mouth on her. It's not. You don't want to hear this. Just kidding. No. She's going she to yell at me when she gets home? Maybe. Right. I, <laughs> I deserve it. It's okay. I love you. Oh, yeah. Um, I was talking to Becca, not Allison. That got weird for a second. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Um, <laughs> so, okay. I do have one more question. Mm -hmm. um, your daughter is in fourth grade. Yes. She um, is. is she interested in the arts? Um. She loves coming to my shows. Um, she loves that. Um, when she was younger, she um, talked about, you know, wanting to be an actor, um, wanting to, you know, wanting to do what I do. Mm -hmm. um, she, um, she saw me in uh, Cinderella at mm -hmm. Theater for Young America, and I was one of the ugly stepsisters. <laughs> uh, so for a while, she would introduce me and say, this is Mike, he's not a boy. <laughs> And I, I am a boy. Yeah. Uh, I just happen to be an ugly stepsister. Um, but uh, yeah, no, I, I don't know. She, uh, she doesn't talk about it as much uh, anymore. I know she loves. I mean, she loves watching shows with with Beck and I. Mm -hmm. um, she's uh, she was a big Wandavision. She's a big Wandavision fan. Good show. Uh, as all of us are. Oh yeah. Um, but I don't. Um, yeah, you know, I don't know. If if that's what she wanted to do, I would support it, you know, 110%. She wants to be a doctor. Uh, I know her her mom and I would be very, very happy as well. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I mean, for me, it, as long as she's happy, whatever she's doing, as long as she's happy and it gives her, you know, that some sort of sense of fulfillment, then I'm cool with that. That, yeah. that That's a win for me. Becca says drawing. 
Oh yeah, no, she uh, she's an incredible. Um, she's been doing these um, these sketches lately. She did an eyeball, this giant eyeball, which mm -hmm. was uh, like, I that is a skill that I do not have. I cannot draw. Yeah, uh, I can voice the things that she draws. Yeah, that's I cannot cool. Draw them. But she did a horse head the other day, which was just absolutely beautiful. But I mean, the shading that she's doing, the the shapes, the the just all of it at at fourth grade is is it it, it is incredible. It, yeah. It's yeah, it's something else. That's awesome. But I, she's never you know she's never mentioned you know uh, that I, this is what I want to do. You know, right. I, I mean, uh, fourth grade, you know. Right. I mean, there are <laughs> 9,000 things that she wants to do and every day it, it changes, it kind of cycles between a dozen or so every day. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, she, she is an incredible uh, drawer. I love that. Very cool. Um, well, awesome. Thank you for that little tidbit about your family. There you go. Um, well, do you have anything else you want to add or plug that we're, you know, while we're here? Um, it's okay. Uh, I guess the only other, I don't know about plugging, uh, but uh, but the the only other thing I would say is if um, if there are people out there watching and you have uh, disposable income, one, nicely done, and two, um, there are there are a lot of um, artist funds uh, that have been started since the pandemic started. Um, there are artist food banks. Um, that um, that are starting to be well, not starting. That are continuing to run. Um, I know the Unicorn um, has one um, out of the back of their theater, um, and there there are quite a few more um, that are are set up to help artists get through this. Um, because obviously, uh, for a lot of people, it was um, it was their main source of income, um, and all of a sudden, we have we have careers that that don't really exist right now. Yeah. Um, and not everybody has been lucky, uh, as lucky as, as some of us have to, to be able to um, still find work and, and keep going. Um, and so I, I, would, I would invite you, please, please donate. Donate anything you can. Donate your time, donate food, donate money, whatever you can, um, because we're, you know, we're, we're going to come back. Um, the arts are coming back, um, but we, we got we to gotta survive this, this little portion um, before we can get to the, uh, I don't know, the after times for lack of a better phrase. So um, if you can, please, please donate, please help uh, in whatever way you can. If, you know, if, if you've learned nothing today other than <laughs> the fact that Mike talks and does weird voices, um, I hope that's, I hope that's what people can take away today. Yeah, it's a good takeaway. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I will let you get on with your day. Thank you so much for Absolutely. taking the time Thank to you. talk to us. Us, me, us, people watching. I don't know. Was there, wait, are there <laughs> other people? Is there someone in the room with you? My cat. <laughs> your mugs. Yeah. Yeah. No, th I really, thank you so much. I really appreciate you uh, inviting me on today. Absolutely. Well, um, I will kind of see you on Sunday. Not really see you, but I'll be watching you. You'll see, you'll see, you'll see me. I won't see anybody. Right. I will also see me. Right. So yes, thank you. Uh, thank you again. And for everybody watching, thank you for tuning in. And I hope we uh, see you watching our um, virtual gala on Sunday. So with that, I will sign off. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. Bye guys.